So Secret Invasion is wrapped up. We were like, are we going to talk about this? I didn't really have anything I had to say about it mm. until the final episode. Now, what I think is really interesting about uh, the way that this is wrapped up is people fucking hate this. Oh, yes. Like, people have joined hands across all spectrums of the internet, That's Mason. Right. You know, any fandom, whatever, whatever, wherever you are, wherever you sit. That's right. And everybody hates this. Tell me something I don't know. Uh, this, uh, officially, 18% of the world. I likes this. The final episode. Oh, you're talking... The, the Rotten Tomatoes score is 18%. That is official. Uh, so, so which is, you know, uh, 18 reviewers out of 100 thought that this was yeah. more good than bad, uh, but also that's the lowest rating for a Marvel thing, thing ever, ever, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't need a, a direct adaptation of anything. This oh, is sure. obviously Secret Invasion in name only. The comic is... It, it takes all the superheroes that you know and some of them have been scrolls for years and whatever and it's this whole intriguing plot of whatever. Have yeah, I yeah. read it maybe at some point? I can't remember. <laughs> like I don't I don't need that necessarily. Yes, sure. sure uh-huh. I'll take whatever they've kind of set up in this universe. Mm, which is not much. Which is not much. And when you look who's in it, Sam Jackson, Ben Mendo Mendelssohn. Olivia and, Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Um, Amelia, Amelia Clark. Clark, Martin Freeman's back, Don Cheadle. You look at the trailers and you know, they're like, you know, this is going to be like the Winter Soldier and whatever. And blah, it's going to be Marvel's blah. Andor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you get this. Mm. Like what has happened? Yeah. And we'll talk about maybe potentially why, but – how did, how did that – god damn. And it cost $200 plus million. And it cost $200 plus million. Well, also the reason for that is because they reshot it for four months. I see. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of time. Yeah, they need, they said we need this to be greyer. Yeah. We need, need more wandering around the streets of Russia. Mm-hmm. We need it from every conceivable angle. So we're going to do full spoilers yeah, for uh-huh. this because, like, what are we even doing here? Mm. What, are you, what are your thoughts? Okay, so, so for people who aren't <laughs> caught up on – the scrolls in the MCU. Yeah. So uh, in the movie Captain Marvel, of course, yep. uh, they show up. They're refugees from from outer space. And it turns out that, you know, that we think they're bad, but actually they're good. And at the end of that movie, uh, Nick Fury says, as sure as it's 1995, and this is the end of the movie Captain Marvel, I will find you another home out in space. I'm going to get in my spaceship and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to scout about and I'm going to find you a new home for all the Skrulls to live on. Yep. And then he didn't do anything. Yeah. Well, what he did, according to the final episode, mm-hmm. he, he had a look around for a bit, got didn't tired. find anything. He got tired. He got quite tired. He probably had some leaves saved up. Oh, my God, yes, please. And then and he, he got tired of pretending to be on a beach in that yep. little simulator and he's decided to be on a real beach. Sure. So he couldn't find anything, so he just gave up. And and he said, but of course, he said, in exchange for me looking around for another planet for you, if you could be my secret soldiers on Earth, kind of yeah. thing. And he's like, so I I didn't keep up my end of the bargain, but I kept these guys on the leash and etc. But what I think really happened is he just, you know, you know how sometimes you have like a thing on your to do list and it takes you like and you just you sweat about it for ages yeah. and then you finally do, you know you you put it I off got a week. Sort of, said I got a replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you, you put it off a week. I weeks. do actually. That's a real thing. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll remind you after. It doesn't matter. Great. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but then you finally do the thing and it takes five minutes. And you're like, oh, what did I wait till? Yeah. I think it's this. He could have just made a phone call and be like, listen, guys, I, I couldn't find a place. Also, like a bunch of Avengers stuff did kick off. That's true. I Every- mean, that was 13 years after the scroll thing. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But still. Yeah. But anyway, at the start of Secret Invasion, there is a there is a resistance movement or a, or a, or a dissenting movement of Skrulls who are really kind of mad that uh, Fury hasn't done anything for them, but he's still put, taking him on military missions and et cetera. And so they're going to get up to some stuff. They're going to cause a ruckus on Earth, yeah, man. blow some stuff up and, you yeah. know, have a grand old time. Because this is yet again another Marvel story where the villains are a bunch of refugees looking for a home because their planet has been torn apart. Uh-huh. But they also just do big murders for no reason. That's right, yes. So they're the bad guys. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and what does that say? Nothing, essentially. <laughs> yeah. There's no political statement of any real note. That's right. Yeah. Which is kind of a, a wild take. And there's not a really political <laughs> statement or really anything. That yeah, happens exactly. In this What's so wild about this is that no Skrull reveal in this of like, this person's a Skrull and whatever. Yeah. There was literally no interest or intrigue at any point. No. Whenever anybody was revealed or not revealed mm. to be anything. So, I mean, and there's two problems with this. One is, you know, in a real world sense, you couldn't reveal any of the main big heroes to have always been scrolls because they're too expensive. You yeah. couldn't bring it back Chris Evans for a couple of episodes because it would have been millions of dollars and to reveal that he's a, a scroll, you know. Yeah. That would that would be thrilling. But then also 
if he's the only guy, if he's the only superhero you bring back and then he's revealed to be a Skrull, not really a huge revelation. So you've got to bring them all back. Exactly. Put them in a lineup and go, which one's the Skrull? Yeah. And that's extraordinarily expensive. And the second thing is as well, yeah. in, a, in a show like this, in a, in a genre like this, mm. if you want a big reveal and for, for, you want it to be impactful, you need to sow the seeds of it earlier. Yes. And this, sh- this show's been on the boil for several years, so they would have had the opportunity to put clues in previous movies yeah. or TV shows, and then when you reveal it in the show, you could put a little flashback in and point out how they were yes. a scroll the whole time. Rody, like the biggest reveal is probably that Rody is a skull. But I think, a scroll. A scroll, what I say? You said a skull. I don't care. But... The thing He's about, not got a complete skull now. <laughs> the thing about that is I feel like that was only because fans were like, yeah, it feels like he, if anyone was going to be a scroll, you'd pick him because, like, he's an Avenger, but he's not a main player. You mm. could get Don Cheadle. He does TV. You know, there's a Terrence Howard thing, which, haha, they swapped it over and yeah, right, nobody uh-huh. noticed or whatever. Not that that's relevant to this at all. So they went, fuck it, why not? Yeah. Mm. Don Cheadle. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Martin Freeman was a Skrull for a time, yeah. I guess, as well. And the, thing, the thing as well also is that besides Rhodey, we know all who the Skrulls are pretending to be from the first episode. Yeah. Because we see them in their Skrull compound yep. and they're like, oh, you're going to be him and you're going to be him and you're going to be him. Kingsley Benadir yeah. uh, playing Gravik, who's the, the main villain of this, always has that face. Yep. We always know it's going to be find out him. why. Yeah, yeah. It's the first guy that... Fury had him kill her. Well, here's the thing also, if I may, if I may. So in the in the final episode, we get some revelations, which again would be exciting if they were foreshadowed previously in any way yeah. or interesting in any way. But uh, Gravik's character, who has been part of uh, Fury's strike team for a really long time, for, yeah. for many years and since has done... A, since he was a little boy. Yes, and has done many missions for him. He reveals that the face he wears is that of... The first man he killed on the first mission Fury sent him on. Yep. And it's pictures a big reveal. And I think Ben Adir does a really good job of selling it. He's a good actor. I think it's you can feel the emotion behind it, but there's no there's no substance behind yeah. that. Well, first of all, because he's not saying it to actual Fury, he's saying it to Amelia Clark's character, disguised as <laughs> Fury. But I think even if you did say it to regular Fury, he'd be like, huh. Yeah. Just, oh, that that's interesting. I've killed a hundred people yeah. this week. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, you killed it. Okay, and, and then the guy. And had, also, like, why would I even remember that? Exactly. And the guy apparently had a wife and and a family and what have you. And that's you know, but but also probably was a bad guy. Yeah. You know. So. But even if he wasn't, like, yeah. Fury doesn't care. Yeah. So what I was going to say is, first of all, you know, a, a show that is about characters who can become anyone, mm. if if you're not using that to build a sense of real paranoia of, of the you know the supporting characters who could be a scroll and et cetera, yeah. what a waste of time. But also this revelation isn't anything. Let me pitch you something, James. All right. We're in full-on hater mode is what's happening here. Wow. I mean, let me just turn the dial that we have in the studio <laughs> okay. to full-on hater mode. Full-on hater mode, if you wouldn't mind. So imagine if this character showed up and Fury was like, that man looks exactly like my son. Yeah. But my son's dead. Yeah. We're setting aside Skrull Wife. This is a different. This is sure. a diff- It could be Skrull Wife. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. But, but this, is a, this is a different child. But then you're like, well, okay, well, you know, it's it's obviously the Skrull's messing with me, you know, yeah. but I'm not going to fall for it kind of thing. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe his son is dead and they've just got a file on the him and the kid and they know how to mess with yeah. him. Or maybe they've captured his son and yeah. they've put him in the machine so they have all his memories or maybe it is his son. Yeah. Or maybe they prestige and at the end it's both. So you're saying that maybe something should happen. Maybe something <laughs> should have happened. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Or maybe this, maybe at the end he leaves and we never know. Yeah. You know? Guess we'll never know. That's that's the, the essence of the I mean, there's the a lot of things. There. There's a lot of people that leave and we never know at the end of this. <laughs> it's true, you're right. I would yeah. say. Yeah. But no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. There's no... Where's the paranoia? Yeah. The whole time I'm thinking, oh, was Olivia Coleman's character a Skrull? Ah, uh, who cares? She wasn't, <laughs> no. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's the, the most popular movie, but like The Winter Soldier, you don't know who's in it and who's not, how mm. deep does it go, you know, and that bleeds over into other movies and all this, the other kinds of things, and this bleeds into one movie sort of, mm. you know? Yeah. It's it's nothing. And also, apparently there's a million of them. Right. But like, what is that reveal? There's a million. Is there? That's a lot. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. What are they doing with that? Well, they're just sitting around mostly, <laughs> having regular jobs, you know. Maybe you even go, Ben Mendelssohn's the villain. Right. Because they had a relationship and it fell apart and now Mendo's like, yeah. you betrayed me and you promised me a home and you didn't. 
But again, you could, but, but the, you know, and but there's so many up op- because anybody can be anybody. Maybe that isn't Mendo's. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe he died and he's been replaced, or maybe he he does feel betrayed or what have you. But you know, just the, again, there, there you're was, suggesting that something should I happen. Would have, I'm <laughs> suggesting that something might have. It might have been good if something. Furthermore, it might have been good if something had happened in the show. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, here's some two things that did happen. Maria Hill dies and Ben Mendo dies. Yeah, that's right. And they just they both shot. Uh huh. And then that's that's the end of those characters. I sure guess. is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they can all come back because of scrolls and <laughs> maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I loved in the. I might have been the final episode. It might have been the second to last. There's a moment where Nick Fury goes to one of his many graves, mm-hmm. and then he's got a secret compartment. And he opens it up and in there there's a gun and an eye patch. It's, and he puts on his eye patch like that fucking means anything. Right? Like because the, the, he may as well just put on a name tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lanyard. <laughs> and, and this is a problem which, which you know, sometimes affects the, the MCU and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I feel it and sometimes it, it doesn't. It's that time passes in the MCU in between the movies mm. and we're expected to just sort of roll with the changes. Yeah. Sometimes big changes have happened and sometimes they haven't. So the idea behind this one is like, oh, well, Fury's lost a step, hasn't he? Mm. You know, he's gotten too old for this. When did he get too old for this? Yeah, in, like, in space. In space, I guess. Well, people kept telling him that he's lost it. Yeah, yeah. But, there was but never... then it's thematically he's putting the eye patch on to signify that he's, yeah, that no, he's I got back it. to his old but self. But, like, it also it doesn't do anything for him. No. It's just, like, a, the, the way that he looks. Mm. He should have said, I'm mostly here for the gun. <laughs> Should have added but he that. has a gun. They should have added that line in ADR. But like, where's any? I wanted two guns. Where's there's any... a million scrolls, <laughs> so I need at least twenty bullets. <laughs> there is this kind of thing that he's lost a step, but yeah. I didn't really get the sense that he got it back. Mm. He didn't have any good action sequences. Yeah, yeah. Remember the bit where he had to cut his way out of the car or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Remember the bit in the Avengers where he picked up a rocket launcher for a yes. second. Yes. Well, also, you know. One thing that I think uh, uh, has been suggested on the internet, people will say. Speaking of Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and we've we've always said, "Oh, I love the, you know." There's a little bit, there's a little bit of an espionage vibe to that, like a yeah. like a Cold War thriller kind of situation, like not full tilt, something but just a, happens. something happens in that. And and we've all, you know we've often said, "Oh, what if what if the, what if we got a you know a, 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 an espionage thriller in the Marvel universe, the MCU?" And people have said, "Oh, well, no, you have it. You don't like it. What's what's the deal there?" Well, it should have been good. <laughs> you know, we want that, and also it's yeah, good. you can't just. Do it. Right? And, and I think, you know. <laughs> it has to be two things. That's exactly right. And, like, beyond it being an, an espionage thriller and a spy thriller, mm. like, we've recently got crazy spy stuff with the Mission Impossible franchise. And or. And, and or the last Bond movie, that yeah. kind of thing. Like, if we're, we're in an elevated universe filled with superheroes and that sort of stuff, if you're going to give me an espionage thriller mm. and a spy thriller in the Marvel universe, like, knock it up a notch. Yeah. Like, give me, I want to see. I think they thought that them being scrolls was them not knocking. Yeah, I guess it was. Though, you know? But like even like even even if you're saying, oh, Fury, he's lost a step or whatever, I think he could still jump out of a plane without a parachute. Totally. You know, that's a fun little give give us a fun little action scene. He's got a like, hologram jetpack. He's got a hologram <laughs> jetpack, exactly. This stuff writes itself. <laughs> Where's his stuff? Where's his stuff? <laughs> he's just got a gun and an eye patch. And the eye patch didn't even have anything in it. Didn't have anything in it. Not a laser or nothing. Not a goddamn laser. Also, he looks cooler without it. That's kind that of That one cloudy yeah. eye with the scar. That's exactly right. It's way cooler. The, the thing about Fury in the comic books, whether it's original David Hasselhoff style Fury or, or, or present day Fury, yeah. Shield is full Sometimes he's a crazy robot. Crazy stuff. <laughs> Agents of Shield, uh, Coulson had the flying car. He had Lola. Yeah. Give me anything like that. Give me. S- some gadgets and some fun stuff, you know? And then at the end, yes. he just goes back to space. Right? It's like nothing happened. Mm. There's a million scrolls on Earth. It's like yeah. eight less, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. my goodness. Mm. Uh, so speaking of, so a big point of contention is, and they've answered this more afterwards, but how long was Rhodey a skull? Skrull? <laughs> <laughs> how long has Rhodey had a, scr- had a skull? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> now, okay, so... So the, the this has been answered. Oh, okay, officially. Yeah. What okay. Do you think. Well, so so the the question arose because when Skrull Rhodey is killed and they go to rescue original Rhodey in the uh, the Skrull facility, he's wearing a hospital gown, and a lot of people have said that looks exactly like the hospital gown he was wearing at the end of uh, C- Captain America: Civil, Civil War, War yeah. which suggests that. And also, he had some trouble walking in the in the sequence. So yeah. they've suggested this this takes place. Uh, that he was captured rather by the scrolls after civil war so that in that the infinite the the rhodian infinity war and endgame etc yeah was a scroll i don't think that's true but unless you have a that's revelation that's what they said 
Yeah. Oh, that's Apparently disappointing. That's the, that's the implication. Because other people on the internet. Also, have... I feel like people would have like people picked up on that and they went, yeah, maybe. Yep. Yeah, well, exactly. That's true. Because <laughs> otherwise, maybe you would have put yeah. that in the movie. That's exactly right. The show. Well, see, I think they're not committed to like. No. And I think, again, also subject to change. Yes. I think if enough voices say, well, that doesn't make any sense, mm. they will very much change it. Because I would suggest that in Endgame, I do think you see him bleed and he bleeds red. Sure. And the scrolls famously bleed purple. Yeah. So probably not him. And the, th- the thing about it is obviously, like, like you're maybe absolutely they, right. Maybe they took him out for a minute. If it's Skrull Rhodey in Infinity War and Endgame, then why didn't he do any Skrull stuff at all? Like yeah. even when he was alone, he didn't transform back into a Skrull at any point. Also, like, why keep them? Yeah. To what end? That's a good point. So they can come back. That's the reason. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. I guess it's also like that they're not entirely bad guys, but like mm. you're taking somebody's life anyway. What is your, your plan? Doesn't is the machine hold on, give them the memories? Yeah, but once you've done that, oh, I see. They're not making new memories. Oh, it's in the box, point, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, you're taking their life. Mm. You can't let them out because they'll tell somebody what happened. They'll tell on you. They'll tell on they'll you. They'll tell on you to their teacher. They'll dob on you. <laughs> That's right. So That's I don't. Right. Why even keep them? Yeah, yeah. So you can be like Martin Freeman. Yeah, here. you should let them go and be like, yeah, dob on us if you want. But remember, dibber dobbers wear nappies, <laughs> Rody. So you know. Oh, but anyway, the the counter argument is that. Yeah, he bleeds. He bleeds blood in Infinity War and human blood in Infinity War and Endgame. Sure, uh, and also uh, during Infinity War and Endgame, he wears like the exo frame legs yeah. to to help him walk. And then in, in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, he doesn't wear them. The other theory okay. is that he got snatched after Endgame, but before Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, that makes more Which, sense. And I mean, look, and the problem maybe he went in for a prostate exam and they snatched it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know. That's the, what you're saying? How are your legs? They're fine. What about the prostate? Don't know. <laughs> because he's in Armor Wars, which yeah. is a movie now or a TV series? That's which a great is, question. It's a great question. We don't have the answers here for you, but anybody can Google it. That's the magic of Google. <laughs> Armor Wars is coming up in which Don Cheadle is starring as Rhodey. Yep. So presumably there will be one scene at the start where he's like, yeah, I've caught up on everything. Yeah. I'm sick. He'll be at... Tony Stark's grave, and he'd be like, "I didn't even know he was dead. Yeah, I didn't even know he was sick." Yeah, he would say, "I'm yeah. actually, I'm also here to retrieve my war machine suit, which That's I right. keep in his grave, and this memory chip <laughs> that I'm going to shoot into my head right now." <laughs> now I'm up to date. That's They'll right. do that. They'll just wave a magic wand and be like, "I'm up to date," and then we will never think about it again. Did fake Rhodey die? Rhodey? Yeah. Yeah, get shot in the head. That's great. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> Speaking Nick of Fury, things, shot I... him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Speaking of uh, things that are cool, if I don't know if somebody died or not, go on. Did um the did Gravik die at the end? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did he explode or was he kicked hard? No, a uh, guy shot him really hard through the chest with a laser. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, great. Anyway, do you want to talk about that big dramatic I, scene? I do that want to you, talk about that you, this. Yeah, that you but, definitely remember. Okay, so they both get super scrawled. No, okay, but, 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 let's wind it back a little bit. Okay, so the other thing Gravik is looking for to destroy the world, yeah. to trick the president into bombing everything. He mm. wants that sort of thing. Dermot Mulroney. That's right. But he also wants something called the harvest, which is a vial consisting of samples of DNA from basically every super-powered being that we've seen. Every hero, every villain. It's all in names. a vial and you can splash that on a, on a scroll and they'll turn into a super scroll. of Now you've got to put them in a big whirly You've got to put them in the whirly gig machine and the big light goes. Yeah, exactly. so, you've got to put them in the Gravitron. Yeah, the, the Gravitron. Very <gasps> good. <gasps> it's the Gravitron. <laughs> you go to the Royal Melbourne show and eat some ice cream and a, and a cotton candy, you get in the Gravitron and then you vomit you everywhere. You big, big up powers. <laughs> That's right. Big up okay, powers. So, for, so for people who are perhaps unaware, in the comic books, the Scrolls could never defeat the Fantastic Four. Yep. Uh, and so they decided their Because they secret- didn't want to. That's right. But they decided one day they did want to. <laughs> and so their secret weapon was going to be the Super Scroll. So they yep. created a Scroll who could not shapeshift anymore but had all the powers of the Fantastic Four. Yes. And, and subsequently there have been different versions that have different powers. Yep. Uh, and so they've decided to go with this. Johnny Storm did it at the end of Silver Surfer. He absolutely did. Yeah. And so clearly Marvel have gone... Well, what assets do we have? That's right. And for our, arms. Our viewers, they love it when the hero fights a villain who has roughly equal powers. They've loved it since Iron, since Iron Man. Yeah. Boy, boy, are they going to love it if we give the hero and the villain every power. Here we go. Here are the powers. Okay. Official. All right. Flora, this is from IGN. Flora Colossus, which is Groot. Korg, Frost Beast, Hulk, Captain Marvel. That's enough. Yeah. You could just be like Captain Marvel. That's all you need. <laughs> Mantis, yeah. Thanos, Thanos. Cull Obsidian, 
Extremis, Ebony Moore, Captain America. And Ebony Moore's rings. Yeah, Ebony Moore's rings. Yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we'll go yeah. to that. Captain America, by the way, pointless. You've got you don't Hulk. Need- <laughs> You've got the Hulk. Drax is what you, did you get to Drax? I can't remember. Uh, I haven't done Drax yet. Okay. Got well, Drax. Ghost. Uh, yeah, okay. Winter Soldier. You've got Captain America. Yeah. Drax, Corvus Glaive, Abomination. Again, you've got the Hulk. Mm. Proxima Midnight, one of the Outriders, Chitari, Valkyrie, Thor Odinson, Gamora. Now, as you, me- as you mentioned, with the Super Skrull, takes on four powers of the Fantastic mm. Four. That's right. Pick four. Right. Because this is an insane cast yeah. that you've got here. You've got nine of these are strong guys. Yeah. Korg, Hulk, Thanos, Carl Obsidian, Abomination. They should have added, added X-Men character strong guy. <laughs> Just the guy who's strong. It's the same power. Yeah. Just pick one. Except so, one has weird tattoos. Also, I didn't know that Drax is like the markings on his arm. I thought they were branding or tattoos or something. They are. Okay, but they just grow out of his arm. Yeah, they're not supposed to be there. Yeah, right. So what you would pick, you yeah. pick four, you'd go strong guy, someone who could fly, the phasing. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, yeah, an extremist yeah. for the healing. Why? And now you've got this person running around in the universe. Not, not for long. With, no. <laughs> what they should have even done at the end of this is like, oh, the powers are fading off yeah, me or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's what they should have done. Why James. can they do magic? Let, let me, <laughs> I know. Let me throw this out to you before we nitpick everything to pieces. How about this? What if in what if they hadn't done this to this extent and in, in the Marvels, the big villain through quantum entanglement or whatever, yeah. gets all the good powers. They get Hulk, they get Captain Marvel, sure. they get uh, Thor or whatever. Yep. And then, like, Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, she gets all the also-ran powers. She gets Mantis and she gets Ghost and she gets all the lame ones. Sure, yeah. Right? And the bad guy's like, aha, you're in for it now. But yeah. Kamala Khan, because she loves all those heroes and she knows everything knows about the powers, them and yeah. she knows how to do everything and she's studied them or whatever, she knows she can use Manus's power to make someone go to sleep. Yep. She knows she can use Ghost's power to become intangible or whatever. So you're saying like, something should happen. Something should happen. <laughs> they should save something interesting for another thing, right? But this isn't anything. <laughs> it's a they're punch just, up. They're just two randos. It's a randos. punch up in a dirt field. They're just two randos <laughs> activating powers randomly. <laughs> How would they even know? They wouldn't. How does Gaia know to use Manus' uh, go-to-sleep mental powers? I mean, how does it even work? How does it work? I mean, I know we shouldn't get caught up in, like, the comic book logic of it. I think we can in this instance, <laughs> though. Well, I don't like to do that normally, but it's mm. just I, I do not understand mm. any of the decisions here. Yeah. I feel like it's a reshoot. I feel like they went, what arms do we have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose arms do we have on file? And whose arms will we re- will people recognize? Exactly. That's exactly it. So every because the fight is like four minutes long, and I think they wanted every frame to be, oh look, Amelia Clark's got Drax's arm. Isn't that a bit of fun kind of thing? No, know? it's not. You're right. It's not. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But again, magic. Yeah. Do you also have their memories? I guess. Maybe I don't know. Surely not from their DNA. I guess if you put them in the Gravictron, maybe you get their memories. <laughs> I don't well. know. But how would you – and also, as, you, as I think I mentioned earlier, when when uh, Gravic uses Ebony Moore's telekinesis, he gets Ebony Moore's rings as well. Yeah. How's that, how's that work? Because that was the file that they had. That's the file they had, exactly right. <laughs> and anyway, again, it, it, it doesn't end because anybody does anything clever with the powers, no. really. It's just exchange laser beams and big fists. Yeah. And then until until Gaia shoots him through the chest with the, the big zap. And that might be what happened. Yeah, that might be what, <laughs> might be what happened. I don't remember. But what, uh, look, if we we're going to put money on this, let's put one dollar on this, James. Sure. One gentleman's dollar. Okay. What do you think is going to happen to Gaia? We're never going to see her again. Mentioned again? What do you think? No. Not ever? Do you think they're going to Inhumans She might be this? in the Marvels mm. She's going to go to live with the Inhumans on Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. They're just never going to mention her again. I mean, if they bring her back, yep. she can't have all of this. No, they're going to, they're going to, if she comes back, they have to nerf her. So yeah. they can either go, well, she has everybody's powers, but they're not as powerful. Also, like, you're going to do Rogue at some point. Right. Uh-huh. What is this? I don't know, man. <laughs> My money's on... You won't see her again unless they need her in, like, Secret Wars. Yeah, okay. In which a a soulless CGI version of Amelia Clark will show up again. No, you're right. Um, And she'll shoot a Captain Marvel laser. She might have to come back for a scene where everybody's there. Yeah, that's true, Which they've already filmed, probably. (laughs) That's right. Or they've got, they've scared her. Mm. I feel like, and look, I don't believe in the comic book bubble Uh when you do good movies. Right. I think it is irrelevant mostly when you release a comic book movie if it's good. I think Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is 
proof of that, Agreed. right? But at the same time, it does feel like to me right now that we are on that comic book stunt treadmill that we were in the 90s. Absolutely. I feel like Avengers Endgame was the death of Superman. And then they were just like, what's next? Uh, Batman breaks his back. And it's been like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every few months we get something's going to collapse the universe and whatever. But it's got to the point where it's like, you can't get me to care about this. Right, yeah. And I'm not saying that comics didn't recover from that. They have, but the numbers have never been the same. That's true. Stories have been, I feel like, have only gotten better in comic books. Yeah, uh-huh. But the literal numbers have never been the same. And yeah. I feel like if they keep doing stuff like this, yeah. they are very much in danger of that becoming the, the MCU. That's exactly right. And I, a thing you said there I think is important, that comic books have never been better, but – the MCU's, their, their tactic now is to, to just to adapt that thing in the most superficial way as possible, yep. as quickly as possible. We've talked about uh, Thor Love and Thunder, mm-hmm. which adapts to galaxy-spanning, time and space and dimension-spanning Thor storylines that ran for years, and they just knock them both out in two hours. Yeah. And it's you're not getting value for money there. No, you? you're absolutely no. not. And it's, I guess, and it's at least partially because... Chris Hemsworth probably doesn't want to be Thor forever. Yeah. So, you, you know, your options are either do it now or recast it and maybe people don't like the new Thor, you know? Maybe they don't. Mm. So, yeah. You know, we've got the Marvels coming up. You mentioned there's things that you're still excited for. Still excited. Regardless of what happened in this series, I'm still excited for Armor Wars. Yep. I think that'll be cool, especially if we get a, a version of uh, Crimson Dynamo, Titanium Man, all those guys. Sure. I'm excited for Loki Season 2 as well. Abs- absolutely, I think yeah. I think Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson are a great combo, and I'm very excited to see them again. Uh, what else is coming out? Another, another, uh, Craven. Uh, Craven the Hunter. Oh, Craven the Hunter, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to have a Craven sweep. Of the box office once again. Uh, a She-Hulk season two, if they ever make one. Doubt it. But no, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. And just the further adventures of Gaia and Drax's arm. See, I know like He's a lot going to speak in the voice of Dave Bautista. I, I know a lot of people hate She-Hulk and they're like, for various reasons that I, quite frankly, don't care to get into. Mm-hmm. But at least it wasn't like somebody's collapsing the universe and everything falls apart or That's whatever. True. At least it was like, this is basically what modern She-Hulk comics are. And it's a little bit different, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, you don't have to like that necessarily, but it seems like some things happened and they thought about it. (laughs) That's right. Anyway. (laughs) And that's the best we can hope for. (laughs) But I feel like, look, something good comes out next and I'm like, everything's fine. Yeah. Like when Guardians 3 came out, I'm like, oh, yeah. Of the, I mean, Ant-Man, I didn't like that, but this was great, actually. Mm. So everything's fine. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All we need is a couple of things that are good and fine every year. That's what I want. I don't want a Marvel movie every month. Nope. Give me two good ones a year. Give me a movie a week. All right, great. <laughs> All right, let's move it along. Yes. Yes. 